Imagine that you're on your way to drop your daughter off at school. Every hundred yards, you pass a checkpoint where because you're Uyghur, the police check your ID, iris scans, monitoring every moment you make. Imagine that once your daughter gets to the school, she's interrogated with questions such as, do your parents pray at home or read the Quran? And imagine her honest answers lend you in a concentration camp the next day. Imagine while you're in a concentration camp, your daughter is taken away and sent to a state-run orphanage. You only find out what's happened to her when you see her face in a government propaganda video bragging about the orphanage system. Does this sound like a science fiction dystopia? Absolutely. Sadly, this is the life of the Uyghurs today in China's controlled East Turkestan, which authorities call Xinjiang, meaning new territory or new dominion. I am standing before you as a human rights advocate, attorney, immigrant, and American. But more than any other title, my Uyghur identity is the most important aspect of my life today. Uyghurs like me are experiencing cultural genocide in Xi Jinping's China. Just two weeks ago, Xi Jinping told the world that remolding and replacing other civilization is both stupid and destructive ideas. Consider the Holocaust. Throughout the history, crises of this magnitude have not started overnight or have not happened overnight. They started small, predicated on lies, and expanded rapidly. China has a long history of persecuting Uyghurs. In fact, I was born in a prison camp in Kashgar at the height of cultural revolution. For committing the crime of being a Uyghur, my mother was locked up, beaten, and tortured. She was forced to deliver me while wearing a cast from the chest down. This changed in the late 80s and early 90s. It was a time of relative freedom and economic progress. I remember going to religious services with my father on an important holidays. I witnessed the revival of Uyghur culture. As a child, I felt strongly the sense of relief and joy in being able to participate in community life. But the China of today is not the China of my childhood. China is rapidly regressing back to the worst version of itself. In 2009, China began militarizing social control in the name of combating uh, extremism. The regime is implementing high-tech surveillance and on a vast scale, drastically expanding the imprisonment of Uyghurs and other ethnic uh, Turkic minorities, and exporting these surveillance technologies to other authoritarian regimes from Cambodia to Venezuela. Cities, towns, villages are blanketed with surveillance cameras. Entire population are subject to mandatory DNA and other biometric data collection. Monitoring apps are installed on every phone. Think of East German Stasi police state with cloud computing, artificial intelligence databases, and you will have a pretty good idea of the life of the Uyghurs today. If this surveillance picks up something that the government does not like, the arrests are made swiftly without any due process. In the last two years alone, authorities have detained more than two million Uyghurs in definitely in the government, what they call, uh, euphemistically called educational transformation centers or boarding schools. Let's put that in perspective. That is the half of the size of the Norwegian population. And these two million plus people have names, families, aspirations, like all of us in this room. As we speak, China's detention of Uyghurs is the largest internment of an ethnic minority since World War II. Put this in context. At the height of Nazi Germany, they were imprisoning as many as 750,000 people. Scholars have compared these camps to Stalin's Gulag that detained uh, over 18 million people during the period of 30 years. Ladies and gentlemen, never again is happening again today in China. These camps put Uyghurs through conversion therapy, which I believe is the human engineering and reprogramming. 
Camp survivors said that they've been forced to study Xi Jinping ideology and to denounce their religion, amongst other forms of psychological tortures. Those don't follow the rules, comply, or, or do what the authorities told them, suffer physical torture. It appears from the Chinese government's official statements and their actions that they have found a so final solution to what officials long called the Uyghur problem for now, without mass killing the Uyghurs. And what is happening in East Turkestan is not being confined there. These cruel methods of surveillance, AI-powered racial targeting, are being exported to Eastern China and other countries. Today, 18 countries, including Ecuador, Pakistan, Uzbekistan, the UAE, and even Germany, have already adopted Chinese surveillance techniques to repress and or monitor their own citizens. In fact, China has been promoting these methods as a way to deal with the world's so-called Muslim problem. About 12 years ago, the Chinese authorities confiscated my parents' passport when my brother married the daughter of a leader who spoke at this forum uh, earlier. I haven't seen my mother since my law school graduation 15 years ago. My parents have not met five of their eight grandchildren. Two of those five grandchildren are here in the audience with us. Up until last year, I was able to check in with my parents regularly on a Chinese messaging app. Despite the likelihood that we are being monitored by Chinese cyber police, our ability to video chat and exchange photographs had given us a comfort and sense of connection, despite Chinese barring from us meeting in person. But today, even that kind of basic freedom, the right to communicate with family members across borders, has been taken away from us. And I'm not alone. The old Uyghurs with relatives in East Turkestan, even those who are not politically active, have been similarly cut off from their families. Like other Uyghurs, I worry that I, when, I won't even know when my parents die. This is not a problem for the Chinese citizens to solve, because they have no voice in the matter. Censorship in China makes it impossible for Chinese citizens to even know the existence of these camps. This is a problem for those of us in this room and leaders around to solve. If you remain silent, this problem will persist and spread. And if you let this happen, what does that say about us? Many business leaders, scholars, government officials are feigning ignorance today. History won't be kind to those who turn a blind eye. Our silence is aiding the status quo. You no longer can say you did not know, because you know now. I don't want you to be just concerned or feel pity for me or my people. I want you to be outraged, and I want you to act. Consider partnering with an organization like the Human Rights Foundation. Make your voices heard, and speak loudly, and tell your country that they need to stop doing business with Xi Jinping's China. Pressure your government officials to stop trading with China and companies like Huawei and Hikvision. Pressure the International Olympic Committee. Demand the Chinese shut down these camps if they still want to host the 2022 Winter Olympics. Don't invest in the companies building facial recognition, racial profiling, surveillance system. Pressure your government to adopt the Magnitsky Act. Business as usual cannot continue. The famous words of a clergyman by the name Martin Neumüller in the Nazi Germany have a new resonance today. When I was growing up, I never thought that this could happen. If you don't stand up and fight for your rights, this could happen to you.